Today I'm going to tell you about the things I either did or wish I did early on in my career as a clinical data analyst. So the first tip I have for you is you should seek out a mentor as soon as possible. It doesn't matter how experienced or smart you are, healthcare and analytics are both constantly evolving. There's always going to be new techniques, new tools, new software, new medical procedures. Mentors can not only help you learn those things, but they can also show you the ropes when you're really new. My first experience as a data analyst was pretty uncommon in the sense that I was the only data analyst in this department of a medium-sized hospital, and I inherited a lot of SQL code from my predecessor. Some of that SQL code ran on a schedule, and it affected other SQL code as well. Now, sometimes I would have to apply updates to that code. Anytime I had to do that, it always felt like being a rookie on the bomb squad. One wrong move and boom, everything just blows up. However, there were other data professionals in different departments that could help me if I got stuck. So I had to rely on them a lot when I was first starting. So as soon as I could, I asked my boss to introduce me to all of the data professionals that she knew at the hospital. I met one who was very supportive of my learning and he ended up becoming my mentor. He would give me advice on how to structure my code. He taught me the fundamentals of ETL, which is a way of moving data from one place to another. He also played a key role in helping me build my soft skills, like how do I prioritize my work or how do I push back on scope creep. These are all really important skills it's nice to have as a data analyst, and it's really hard to develop that if you're just on your own. Now, I also had a second mentor that showed me how to pull data out of Epic. Epic can be really difficult to navigate, so if you know it, that's a valuable skill to have. So his mentorship really helped me accelerate my career early on. Speaking of Epic, that leads me to Tip number two, you should try to work at places that will sponsor you to get trained in Epic. To get trained in Epic, you have to be working for a company that is a customer of Epic. I've said it before, but I'm gonna say it again. Epic is just gigantic in the healthcare world. Epic controls most of the EMR market, so it's very, very beneficial to know how to pull data out of it. Within the Epic database, there's hundreds, potentially thousands of tables to query from. So it's not always clear which piece of data is coming from where in the Epic Epic database. Now, sometimes you'll be working at an organization that takes that Epic data and they curate it into a more user-friendly database. But my experience has been that these downstream curated databases, although they're nice and easy to use, are not as all-inclusive as the upstream Epic database from which it sources its data. So it helps to know Epic if you need to go straight to the source to pull that data if it's missing from the curated database. Those Epic trainings will make it much easier for you to sort through the complexities of the healthcare data, and it makes it easier for you to build reports as well. One final thing I'll say about Epic certification is that if you get certified or accredited in Epic, you could make $90 to $110 per hour as a consultant later on in your career. Speaking of money, that leads me to tip number three. You should be applying for new jobs often, even if you already have a job as a data analyst that you really love. Okay, maybe that sounds a little crazy, but hear me out. There's three reasons why I'm recommending this. Reason one is that people who tend to move from job to job every one to two years tend to make more money than their peers that stay at the same job that whole time. The people that stay tend to see their pay go up by 5% each year on average, but the people that move every year or so tend to see their pay go up 10 to 15% on average every year. I have a tendency to change jobs every two years, so I've seen my pay go up 10% on average each year. My next reason is doing this often is gonna make you smarter and more experienced. I have worked at six different hospitals over the past eight years now. So when a new problem emerges at my hospital, I can often say, okay, I've seen this problem before, this is how we tackled that problem at this previous hospital, and these were the results. And if you can do that, it's gonna make you look super smart. Now, reason three is that even if you don't take that job, going through that interview process is gonna boost your skills in interviewing, and it's gonna make you a stronger communicator. When you interview often, it builds so much confidence in yourself and your ability to market yourself. And that's gonna make it much easier for you in the future to secure the next job. And the best thing that could happen is, hey, you just got offered a job that gives you much better pay and benefits. For the most part, unless you have a super good situation where you're working now, this is one of the easiest ways to make money faster in analytics rather than waiting to get promoted. Now, before I move on to my next tip, I'm gonna give you a bonus tip. 
connect with as many people at your current job as possible. Why? Because you're going to be encountering other people that do the same strategy of moving from job to job every couple of years. And a lot of your colleagues that do this might stay within the same industry. So if you left a good impression on them, it's gonna make it that much easier for you to get a job where they work by networking with them. For example, there was a data analyst position that I applied to several years ago, and I actually knew someone that was working there from an earlier job. Now, I wasn't getting any responses on my job application, so I reached out to that person on LinkedIn to see if they knew anything about the position. I really lucked out here because it turns out that she was the supervisor of the hiring manager for that role. So she got me in touch with the hiring manager and then a couple days later, I got an interview. So my next tip is don't be afraid to ask lots and lots of questions, even if you think they're stupid questions. Believe me, they are not stupid questions. Healthcare is super complicated, so I ask tons of questions almost every day. Now, if you've watched my videos, you've probably noticed that I've used dialysis patients in my examples quite a lot, and I'm gonna do that again because they are such a great example of how complicated patient data can get. When I started my current job, my first assignment was to the dialysis department. They needed me to create a dashboard that did a ton of of things like tracking lab values, tracking appointments for dialysis patients, how effective our dialysis treatments were. Did our dialysis patients get certain immunizations like COVID shots, flu shots, hepatitis B shots, pneumonia shots. For us to track those things though, I knew that we needed to come up with some answers to some very basic questions. And that is, what even is a dialysis patient? If we were to pull up that patient's chart right now in the electronic medical record system, how would we know that they are a dialysis patient? So after having a couple of meetings with the dialysis team, we were able to come up with a fundamental definition for our dialysis patients. So what we came up with was the patient must actively be diagnosed with end-stage renal disease or chronic kidney disease stage four. We must have recently billed their insurance for an episode of either hemodialysis or peritoneal dialysis. They must not have had a kidney transplant recently, otherwise they would not need dialysis, among other conditions as well. So I took a ton of notes during these meetings and I asked a ton of questions. And because there's so much detail to keep track of, one thing that I love to do is I always like to summarize all of the details that I just heard. And then I ask them if that all sounds correct. That reinforces the knowledge in my head and my business partners will be able to correct me on the spot about any misconceptions that I have early on rather than doing something the wrong way and then later learning about that after I've done all this work. Now, my last recommendation is always be learning and innovating. I added innovate for a specific reason. It's not enough to just learn things. You need to apply what you have learned. Otherwise, that knowledge just becomes trivia. Some of the coolest things I've ever built came from applying some new concept that I learned from a previous project. Let me give you an example. At one of my previous hospitals, there was a finance department that wanted to track patient demand. They wanted to measure those volumes on a given day by a given doctor at a given site on a given shift. What the finance department had been doing was they were pulling that data manually from two places. First, they were manually pulling data out of a tool called Qgenda to determine which doctors were working which sites during which shift. Then they had to look up the volume of patients seen by that doctor on that day in the EMR system. They would do this manual work at the end of each month and it would take them hours and sometimes days. Now, when I had been assigned to this project, I had just learned some new tools from a previous project that I had been working on. What I had learned from that previous project was how to pull data out of one database and move it to another using R, scheduling that script using something called a cron job. And I was also vaguely aware that there's this thing called an API that you can use to pull data out of websites. So I reached out to this company, Qgenda, and I asked them if they have an API. They said, yes, there is an API. Here's how you use use it, and then once I learned that, all of the pieces started to fall into place. So I applied what I learned from my previous job by doing the following things. First, I built a script in R that pulled all of our scheduling data that was stored in Qgenda out of their API. It pulled things like the shift that doctor was working as well as the site they were working during that shift. Then the script took that data and uploaded it to SQL where we could do data cleaning. And so for the final step, we took that clean scheduled data, I combined it with the patient volumes data from the EMR system so that we could see the volume 
volume seen by that doctor at their assigned site and shift for that day. I finished up by setting up a cron job to schedule that daily so that no one had to manually do anything anymore. By the time I was done, I fully automated the process and it saved the finance department tons of hours of work. All this happened because I learned a new set of tools in a previous project and I thought, hmm, you know, this might actually be useful in future projects. And so I innovated. The more that you innovate and experiment, the more successful you're going to become in your career. Now, if there's any data analysts out there watching this video, I'd love it if you drop a comment down below to tell us things that you did early on in your career that really helped you out. Well, that's all I have for today. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you in another video.